Welcome back to another episode of Home Theater Gurus. In this episode, episode 41 and episode 42, you're going to see us set up a high pass filter. If you're watching episode 41, you're about to see us set up a high pass filter on a mini DSP. I'm going to do it both on the advanced and the HD plugin. If you're watching episode 42, you're going to see us set up the same thing, a high pass filter, only we're going to do it in the Behringer on the DSP of a Behringer amp. So in case you're wondering why do I need a high pass filter, you know, exactly why do I need it and what does it do? What are, you know, what's the purpose? Before we get started, I just want to say this is going to be based on the hammer, which has a 20 hertz tuning. It works for any sub at any tuning. You just need to know that tuning point. Now, if you're not familiar with the hammer, that's the sub we designed on this channel in previous episodes and is now available as a kit. You can order it through me and GSG will actually cut it for us. Just a favor they're doing for the channel. I'm not really affiliated with them, but they, they're cutting it for us. And if you want to see that sub in action, it is an awesome little sub that I would put at the level of a PB13 or PB4000 from SVS. If you want to see a flat pack video and also uh, after the flat pack was built kind of a performance video, check out Mike from Audio Architect. He's a, got a really, really good YouTube channel. He's, it's a new YouTube channel, but he's just really good. He's better behind the camera than I am, which that doesn't take much. Look down in the description. I'll go ahead and I'll link the video to the, the performance video for the hammer. And you can kind of look back in his videos and find, you know, the flat pack assembly and all that. All right, so let's get on to why we need a high pass filter. If you remember when we designed the hammer, back in the episode where we were doing the WinISD tutorial, and that's where the hammer was kind of born, we looked at things that happen above and below tuning. Now, of course, above tuning, we're controlling that, in, that cone. We're controlling the driver. You know, we control its response using the volume of the enclosure and by manipulating the port. And we can pretty much get any response we want. And, you know, we can, we can do a lot manipulating those things. But below tuning, if you remember, all hell breaks loose. We have no control. The cone loses control. There's no, there's just nothing there to control it. It's flapping around like a fish. All right, so let's look back at WinISD because it shows you what happens below tuning when we apply power. Now we've got just whatever, you know, RMS, I think this is 600 watts on this driver. And you see this tab right here, it's showing us excursion. That's how much movement we have and our cone is moving you know, at different frequencies. And as you see below tuning, it's just skyrocketing. Our cone is moving back and forth much more than it should, but we're limited. All drivers are limited and that's going to be its X max. Now there's a mechanical limit that's usually a little bit above what we're given as X max, but we need to stay, we really need to stay right there. So you can see there's a line right here and that's our limit. We don't really want to go above that, but it skyrockets past it. The more that driver moves, you're increasing distortion and you risk bottoming it out and actually damaging your driver. So when we go below tuning, that's what's happening. If that filter is not set properly, you know, you could easily have too much output below tuning. You know, it needs to be dropping off pretty fast and you're going to start robbing power from the other end, from above tuning, because you're working it so hard below tuning. You know, this is one driver. It's not like we have a, a driver for below and a driver for above. You know, it's one driver and we're killing it because we're trying to force it go lower. Now, sometimes people, you know, they'll, it's bragging. They'll, they'll want to brag about, you know, I've got a Marty sub, which is tuned around 17, 18 Hertz and I'm pushing it down to 15 Hertz. Look at my, you know, my response here. And they'll even have a house curve, which is a great thing to have a house curve. And we've gone over that too, like with episode seven and episode nine. Also the mid bass video, we went over that. So house curves are awesome, but you do not want to push that sub below tuning. You know, so you can brag about it all day about how low you're pushing a sub that's not tuned to go that low. But what you're really doing is you're hurting your performance of the sub because you know, you're just killing the driver. Okay, it would, it would perform so much better. It would be cleaner. You can actually hit louder SPL levels. You know, uh, if you put a filter where you're supposed to put it and protect that driver, let that driver do what it does good and that's gonna be from tuning above where it's gonna rock. You know, quit trying to kill it, pushing it so low, you know, lower than it really wants to go. Now, if you say, well, you know, look at JTR. You know, they go down at 10 Hertz with their 4000, the JTR 4000. Now that's a beastly subwoofer, but you have to understand they're tuned to 10 Hertz. You know, if you take a Marty sub 
And also the hammer, they're both tuned, you know, 17 hertz for the Marty or 17 or 18, 20 for the hammer. Their response is pretty much climbing the whole way up or, you know, linear to at least linear to tuning. The JTR, it's dropping as it's going to tuning, but it's still being controlled so they can afford to boost the crap out of it and it can take it. I mean, it is an awesome driver, but that's how they're going to 10 hertz and they're tuning to 10 hertz so they can boost above 10. They still can't boost below, you know, eight hertz. They're gonna have the same issues, but you're talking eight freaking hertz. So, you know, don't think that you can take a Marty sub or any sub tune for 15 hertz, 17 hertz and push it down to 10 hertz and you're gonna have a JTR 4000. No, it's tuned for 10 hertz. That's why they can safely boost it from 10 and on up. All right, guys, so maybe now you understand why you need it. Let's go ahead and jump on the computer here and we're gonna put these filters in these DSPs. All right, guys, so we're gonna be going over the Mini DSP HD plugin and the Mini DSP Advanced plugin. The Advanced is used on the standard 2x4 and the Balance 2x4. And of course, the HD plugin is used on the HD 2x4. All right, so let's go ahead and do the HD first. All right, now just to hit on something that I missed on episode 7 or I forgot to add to the video. And I've since put it in the description. Not everyone looks at the description. If you're not getting any output to your subs right here when you're connected. Now, I'm not connecting to, you know, the mini DSPs in this video because I don't really need to to show you what I'm going to show you. But when you're connected, you're going to have a selection here option to uh, for a USB or analog input. Sometimes it defaults to USB. And if it does, you won't get any output of your, uh, you know, your, to your subs. So make sure it's selected for analog. Yes, you can get output through the USB cable, but uh, I don't do that because with that method, you can't see your sub to mains to make sure they're integrated right. So anyway, just make sure it's set for analog if you're not getting output. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and go straight to outputs, all right. Now inputs and routing and all this stuff, we went over that in uh, episode seven. So if you're not sure about that kind of stuff, go check episode seven out. All right, we're gonna go to crossovers. And of course, you know how to make sure your crossovers are set up properly and make sure, you know, someone has to be bypassed. That's all in episode seven as well. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put this kind of what it's defaulted at. All right, so when you open it up, you may see something like this. And uh, right here we have a 20 hertz filter and it's a 12 dB per octave and that's the slope and that just tells you how steep the slope is so a lot of times people will say you know a sub has a 20 hertz tune you know you got to set a you know a uh, high pass filter for 20 hertz but that is not true because if you look at what happens here here's 20 hertz we're down 3 dB and it starts dropping at 40 hertz uh, you know that's no good we don't want that our sub will kick butt all the way to 20 hertz. We don't want to start taking anything from it until we get down to our cutoff or our tuning frequency. And uh, oh, and also before I move on, right here you can select it, you know the channels. We're on output one. You can, you know, you have four different outputs on the Mini DSP 2x4. You're only going to be using one input, but you have four outputs for four subs. You can have different, you know, use different subs that require different filters on each output. You know, so you, you're pretty flexible here. Anyway, back to our filter setting. So we don't want to have a gradual slope and we don't want to set it at the cutoff free or our tuning frequency because it's, I mean, that's just not the proper way to do it. Even though we hear people say that just like an old wives tale that won't go away. So we want our sub to go ahead and perform all the way to 20 Hertz and then drop it like a rock. We don't want it to try really to produce anything below that because we want the most performance we can get. So let's go ahead and drop it to 16. All right. So now, we're not really dropping until you know the mid to upper 20 so better than 40. we're down to db at 20 hertz but i mean if you look at 16 hertz we're only down 3 db so it's we're pushing it too hard below tuning and we're still not you know we're slowly gradually coming down below 20 hertz so we want to we actually want a steeper filter this is too gradual just to make this short i'm gonna just let you know anywhere between a 36 db and a 48 is where i like to be see there's 36 see how fast it's dropping and it's already at 20 hertz and we have zero loss uh, 1 db at 17 16 we're at 3 db it's still pushing it a little bit hard 
So let's go a little bit steeper, try 48. And that's a little bit better. See, it's really gonna push it and then all of a sudden it's just gonna drop. So let's go ahead and push it up a little because you see we're still a little too flat below our tuning frequency. 18 Hertz, we've only dropped one dB. I wanna go a little more than that or a little higher. So there we go. You can see it's starting to drop right above 20. 20 Hertz, we're down one dB. 19 Hertz, let's see, two dB. That's pretty good. At 18 Hertz, we're down three dB, so we're pulling that output away from it, so we're not hurting it. You know, uh, 17 Hertz, we're down 17 dB. This is really, really good. We're really gonna protect our driver here. Now, I know people are going to wanna push it lower, but you're gonna hurt it above tuning. And I mean, you're getting down to 20 Hertz. Trust me, if, if that sucker is nice and clean, and not struggling because you're trying to push it below tuning, you're gonna be very impressed, very pleased with you know any subwoofer you build. It's gonna perform so much better. So don't get caught up in trying to extend, you know, uber low. If you're getting down to 20 hertz, you're gonna you're gonna be very, very happy. Now, if you wanna go lower, then of course you're gonna to have to just to design a subwoofer that's intended to go lower, that's tuned lower. You know, so it just depends on what you're after. But this one's not, this one's tuned for 20 hertz, so this is what we need to do. All right, so that was an 18 dB with a Butterworth filter at 48 dB per octave. Let's go ahead and we're gonna move on over to the advanced plug-in just so you guys can see it. All right, now again with the USB and analog right here, here you go, analog digital input, and of course USB is digital. If you were using the USB, which we're not, you would select that. So if you're not getting any output, just make sure you check that. That's been, a, like I said, an issue for some people. And I forgot to put it in episode seven, so you can, you can blame me. All right, so we're going to go, here's our inputs. And right here is our routing. This is where we turn, you know, we're gonna have input only on input one, and we can turn on our subs here. So that's how we'll route it. Come over here to crossover. And we've got our low pass filter and high pass filter. Wrong one, here we go, high pass filter. See right now we bypassed it and it's straight. We don't want that. So we do want a filter. Oh, I've already been in here. Look at there, 17 and 48. Hmm. I think uh, on the other one I actually pushed it to 18. You can see it's gonna bump it up a hair. There we go. All right, so this one is ready for the hammer. All right guys, there you go. Easy peasy. So now you know how to set up a high pass filter. So after this video, I mean, I, like you know, the house is fixing to kick off, so I'm gonna be really busy, busier than I have been. And I'm not gonna lie, I've been kinda lazy, that's why I haven't put out a lot of content lately, but I have had a lot going on. But I wanna get one more out before we start doing the, uh, like the weekly or bi-weekly uh, updates for the new home theater and the new house. Cause I'm actually gonna have a couple of different systems in that house, so I'm gonna, you know, you're gonna see all of those evolve. So if you don't wanna miss those, subscribe. And after you subscribe, hit the notification bell so you get the little ding when those videos come out. And also spread the word on the channel. The more you like a video and you subscribe to it, YouTube sees it. And I'm sure you know, if you've seen, if you've uh, seen a lot of these videos, you know that more people need to watch these because it's sad, but there's so much bad information out there. People need to know about it and get good information. And YouTube pushes it more when you like a video and you subscribe to it. They're like, hey, you know, this channel's getting some attention. So they, they give it more attention. But anyway, I'm rambling again, so let me stop that. A lot of people have requested uh, room setup videos and really Odyssey, you know, that Odyssey uh, editor app. People are confused how to use it. I've had a lot of people come to me and they'll use it and they say, well, it screwed up my response. And there's ways to use it and tricks to, you know, to use it to your advantage. And that's what we're gonna go over, how to use it properly to get the performance out of it that it's capable of. I'm gonna show you when to use it, when you shouldn't use it. Luckily, with the new editor app, you can actually limit the EQ. And that's a biggie because we can use it where we need it. And you may not always need it full bandwidth, you know, from 20 hertz, 20K. So we're gonna cover that. I don't wanna give too much away. If I keep talking, I'll just do the whole video right now. And But I wanna get you know get it on my TV here. I don't really have a setup. Got a hammer sub here and two uh, bookshelves. So we're gonna use just that and uh, so I can do the video. All right, guys, so that is gonna be it for this one. Like I said, don't forget to subscribe, notification bell, and I will see you guys next time.